Welcome to Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl. Now this is one of those movies with lots of info, so as usual, big data board time. Characters. First, Captain Jack Sparrow, who is in a state of permanent drunkenness. Used to be the captain of the Black Pearl and got backstabbed by his first mate 10 years ago and left marooned on an island with a single pistol with a single bullet. Barbara Badosa used to be Jack's first mate, so I'm sure you can fill in the blanks. But additionally, he and his now crew of the Black Pearl, because he's the captain now, are cursed. William Turner, son of Billiam Turner. He's a common bitch. But important because they need his blood to break the curse, which I'll explain more about later. He also loves Miss Elizabeth Swan, which is an uncommon bitch. She's quite adventurous and the governor's kid. Corridor No Ringtone, who is kind of an unimportant g All you need to know is that he's a commodore in the navy, army, what have you, and he wants to marry Elizabeth Longneck Waterbird. Now some other shit you need to know, the Black Pearl, which is the fastest ship in the sea and its curse, which is kind of an inaccurate name here because it's actually the curse of the Aztec gold. That are 882 pieces of gold cursed by some dickheads where whoever stole them becomes a non-dying human that turns into a decomposed corpse under the moonlight. And the only way to undo this curse is to return all the pieces to the chest that came from and sacrifice some blood on that gold and for some reason if you steal the gold as a group everybody in that group has to leak his blood on the piece of gold he stole if not if there's like one person that didn't do it they're all still fucked which is kind of what is happening with the curse of the black pearl they're all still fucked because one guy didn't do it which is billion turner that's all you need to know for now beginning with the moving picture we join in with little miss swan on a boat ride to the land of eng or actually it might be from england because they're going to the caribbean <laughs> it doesn't matter unimportant i'm wasting time here she is traveling with no ringtone and her dad when they come across a shipwreck and find a boy overboard which is will turner they rescue him and she finds him dripping out in bling that she steals and keeps for eight years in a dusty drawer when she finally decides that today is a day that this incredibly suspicious looking pirate gold that no one knows she has is going to go on to her right she's gonna wear it because she had a dream about how she got it when she was 12 fascinating stuff then her dad comes in a room with a gift that he wants her to wear to corridor norrington's promotion ceremony which she must first wear a corset for also known as a i will not breathe in the name of fashion device why do we not call fashion designers fascists I know it's reserved for like Hitler and shit, but we could just call him a dumb c. It's what he is, right? Anyway, they both go down to receive a gift they ordered from Grown Will for no ringtone. He's a Will. He's a Will Smith. No, he's no. He's not Will Smith. He's a. There's a Smith in it. I remember. Hold on. A blacksmith. And he made this sweet sword for him that's super balanced. Him and Lizzie obviously like each other. They have a short convo like, I had a dream about the day we met. Do you remember? How could I forget, Miss Swan? I told you. You can call me Elizabeth. At least once more, Miss Swan. <sighs> Grow some balls, you bitch-ass horseback. Then we cut to Captain Jack Sparrow very elegantly arriving at the port, and unless there are dolphins pulling this along or other sea creatures tugging this thing that is 90% sunken, I don't think it should be moving at all due to the drag of the sails underwater alone. But what do I know? Also, it's a cool shot, so it gets cool shot points for that, so who cares? He steals some money that's just left out in the open by some idiots, then he tries to finesse these two retarded guards and steal the fastest ship in the Royal Navy using the power of bullshit alone, although he gets pretty far due simply due to the fact that they are two argumentative dumbass fucks and keep arguing with each other, but not far enough because it starts raining women. See, while this was happening, Lizzie was finding it harder and harder to breathe at Corridor's ego stroking ceremony, and while he proposes to her, he's too self-absorbed to notice that bitch's claim to the lack of oxygen is not because of his glorious proposal or anything, it's just that she can't breathe and she passes out, falling off whatever this place is, missing all these rocks that are miraculously not visible in this shot. Also, how old was Norrington when the movie began? Minimum somewhere around like 20-ish? And wasn't she like 12 or something? Maybe 13? The fuck is this? Parts of the Caribbean grooming simulator? Whatever, back to Jack. The guards won't save her, so he's like fucking useless. C then jumps down to save her. And while she's in the water, her medallion lets out a beacon or like a calling sign. And immediately there's a change in the winds and the weather as a whole. And after he saves her and fixes her breathing problem, Mr. Ringtone arrives and arrests him because he's a pirate. So she's like, You can't do that. He saved me. And now you're gonna save me. And he uses her and once again copious amounts of bullshit to escape and get away and end up in a blacksmith shop where the owner is piss face blacked out drunk. So he very thoroughly makes sure he'll stay that way. Whoa! and frees himself from his irons, only for Will to come in and start hindering his escape because he heard that he threatened Miss Swan. And I don't know if Will meant to aim at the door, but I'm just saying that it's pretty lucky that it didn't go through Jack's head and he didn't die. It's lucky for him and for us, because that'd be a very boring movie. They end up fighting some more until Jack pulls a gun on him and tells him that this shot is not meant for you, only for super drunk Mr. Brown to finally wake up and kill steal Will's kill, or Will's, I don't know, arrest. Once again, taking credit for Will's hard work and the royal dickheads burst in and take away Sparrow. Then later on in the center cabinet, that's right, I'm making it a thing, fuck it. The Black Pearl arrives to town and starts raiding down hellfire, cannon fire, and all manner of things on Port Royal with pirates coming out to shore, doing pirate shit and looking for that piece of gold that calls to them. And when they finally find it on Nizzy, about to shoot her and take it, she calls for parlay, which is French pirate code for take me to your cabin without hurting me. They do that and whilst they're transporting her back to the ship, Will spots her but then gets surprised by a guy he supposedly axed to death a few minutes ago and then gets knocked out by this other guy. Since these pirates are cursed and can't die, then why the dick twizzling shit nugget did this bomber pirate pretend to die? How do you even feel that he got hit? Don't they not feel anything? 
thinking, what the fuck? Doesn't matter. Because a few of the pirates find Jack in the brig. Is it the brig if it's on land? I don't know. Whatever, I'm not a pirate. They find him and mock him. He retaliates and mocks back. And through a break of the clouds, he finds out that the curse is real. And back on the Black Pearl, Lizzie is taken to Captain Barbarossa. And she tries to cut a deal with him to make him leave Port Royal and never come back. And she'll give him this medallion that she thinks they really, really want. And they're like, nah, we don't really want that thing. So she tests their nerves by pretending to drop it in the ocean. And they flinch. So it is confirmed that them hoes want that thing. And by the way, this shot is not like this shot. See the difference? But more importantly, why are they threatened by this? We see later on that they can literally walk on the ocean bed because they can't die. So this is no problem for them. They just can go down and search for it. Not to mention if they're quick enough, they can catch it before it reaches the ocean bed. What a bunch of fucking idiots. Anyway, Barbadosa is like, okay, give it here. He takes it and we leave now. And he takes off, but doesn't take her back to shore because she was stupid enough to tell them that her last name was not Swan, but Turner. So they figure out that she is the lost kid of ex-crew member Billion Turner that they need the blood of to break the curse. And they want to keep her to break the curse. But obviously she's not the one they need. They need Will. And once again, like I said before, assumption is the mother of all fuck ups. Next day, Will's up bright and early to ruin a perfectly good map because these fees want to take their sweet old time to go rescue Lizzie. And he doesn't want to do that. He goes straight to Jack because he overheard that he has experience with the Black Pearl. And after Jack, hears Will's last name and figures out that he's Billion Turner's son. He can use him to his advantage. He decides that he will help him save his bonnie lass. So Will springs him out of the clink and goes... Hurry! Someone would have heard that. And how'd you get in? Was no one guarding this place? Whatever. They go and commandeer a really strong ship that's a little bit offshore by using bullshit Jack Sparrow tactics. And I'm not even gonna try and question the feasibility of this. It might be possible. It might not. I don't care. What I really want to know is how the fuck he knows where they're going. Whatever though, they get there and are somehow strong enough to do this to the rudder and scare the crew off into their lifeboats and make them call for the fastest ship in the Royal Navy, the Interceptor, to come arrest them, which they do in the stupidest way ever because once they arrive, they have the whole crew board the strong ship, leaving no one on the other one which is i'm not an ancient naval guy or pirate or anything but i just i'm th that's pretty fucking retarded gotta be honest here but anyway jack and will take advantage of this lunacy pull the old switcheroo on them and take their ship take off with it obviously they can't follow them because they fuck with the steering system and they make their way over to tortuga which is pirate central to pick up a new crew and on their journey jack tells will about his dad that he was a good man and a pirate and will gets mad at that doesn't believe that so jack's like look your dad was a good man and a pirate that's a fact and facts don't give a shit about your fucking feelings you can't change reality buddy now you can moan and groan about this all day long or you can accept that that's just how the cookie crumbles and move on with life. And like a sane human being, he accepts that fact and they make it to Tortuga where Jack meets up with his trusty dusty old friend, Mr. Gibbs. And he tells him about his map plan to get the Black Pearl back using Will as leverage because Barbadosa needs him. So he rounds up a bunch of willing, able-bodied dipshits to sail under his command and they sail through a storm using a compass that points to whatever the fuck you want to get to an island where the Black Pearl makes birth. Meaning it stops there and keeps all his fucking treasure and trash there. I think it's called Illa de Muerta if my memory serves me correctly. Meanwhile, on the Pearl, Barbosa invites Lizzie to eat and watches her in fascination because any food he puts in his mouth turns into ash then explains the whole curse stuff to her and they, they need her blood to break it she doesn't believe that and stabs him but he can't die obviously so he's like so okay uh, what's next exactly so she runs out on deck in fear only to get more scared because she sees the cursed skeleton crew's true form under the moonlight and they go all spooky scary skeletons on her and send shivers down her spine till she runs back into a room and hides till they get to Illa de Muerta where Jack and his crew arrive shortly after and they both enter the cave where all their treasures are where Barbos is giving a speech to the crew and they're about to undo the curse and while Jack's thinking up of a bullshit trick to pull to I don't know swing this situation in his favor Will bonks him in the head unconscious so he cannot use him to his advantage and Barbosa gives Lizzie a small cut in her hand to drop some blood on the coin and onto the curse and she's like that's it he's like waste not I hate to break this to everybody but you know that the only reason they're keeping her alive is to probably rape the shit out of her after they get the tingle back in their dingles just saying thankfully for her though the undoing of the curse didn't work and after they very scientifically check that He gets mad at her and gets the coin out of the chest, which by the way must be shallow as shit because there's no way 882 pieces of gold will fill any chest that fully if it's any deeper than a half an inch. But anyway, he's like, are you not the child of Bill Turner? No. Then why the fuck is this kid, bitch? And he slaps her down this hill with the coin, which is the dumbest, most retarded move you can do. Why the fuck would you throw the fucking coin down, you brain rotting idiot? They argue among themselves about whose fault it is while Will gets to her and takes her back to the ship while adhering to the pirate code with Jack, which is the exact opposite of the marine code, which is any man who falls behind gets left behind. And after Barbie Osa notices that she is not there anymore and the medallion is gone. They scour the place looking for her but only find Jack surprised but undeterred. They want to kill him but they can't because he knows whose blood they need. So they take him onto the Pearl and they keep arguing about the medallion and the ship bloody bloody blah and I've always felt there's something off about this scene and I finally figured it out. It's that Jack has significantly less mascara on here than any other scene but that's not important. Because they start closing in on the interceptor because they fast as fuck and they even pull out the oars for extra boost and I can't help but think that they'd be much quicker if they didn't have a million holes in their sails but whatever. Over on the interceptor Orlando Coombe was fixing up Lizzie's tiny little cut on her hand and she's like, dude, stop, but I'm about to bust. Uh! 
She gives him them down and he gets pissed because that is confirmation that they weren't capping with the whole your dad's a pirate thing. Then they see that the pearl is gaining on them and despite their best efforts to get away, it is no good. So they decide on abrupt chaos, drop their anchor and do a sick handbag turn in the water to face and fight the dead man crew. And I'm gonna just cut to the chase right here because I'm low on time. They lose, Barbosa gets the koi and the crew is way too loosely tied up and Will somehow ends up escaping a sinking ship that is wicked to blow where he was trapped underneath. I'm just gonna pretend that he found the Mario power up invincibility star and you survived this, however improbable it is. Maybe he found a hole and escaped through it, it doesn't matter. He shows up and tells Barbosa who he is and uses the empty threat of throwing what they need to break the curse overboard into the ocean which is obviously him he's gonna shoot himself and then drop if he doesn't promise that they leave the crew unharmed and let lizzie go free which is even worse than the coin threat because it's super easy to fetch a corpse out of the fucking ocean and i'm pretty sure it'll still be full of more than enough blood to end the curse you dumb virgin c but anyway barbosa agrees but since he didn't specify when or where lizzie should be freed he's gonna maroon her and jack on the same island that he ruined jack on last time with the same single bullet pistol that he throws into the water for him to go after which he does get further and reinforcing my claim that throwing shit into the fucking water is a nothing burger of a threat and on this island he tells her that his miraculous escape last time wasn't miraculous at all because a bunch of rum runners used this as a storage facility and he spent three days total drunk on this island till they came by and you know give him passage to whatever the hell he went afterwards so she helps him drink himself asleep and burns everything all the rum why is the rum gone because she says that that signal is over a thousand feet high the entire royal navy is out looking for me do you really think that there is even the slightest chance that they won't see it of course there is bitch do you know how big the fucking ocean is nevertheless they do find her and once she united with her father and ringtone she begs ringtone to save will as a wedding gift so he agrees and uses jack sparrow to give him a bearing or heading or point the way to treasure island alien where to treasure island the one where the pearl is meanwhile aboard the pearl with the whole crew in the brig they get told the story of billiam turner bootstrap bill will's father how he wasn't really a big fan of jack's mutiny so he sent his one coin over to his son will barbosa got mad at that so he strapped the cannon to him and threw him into the ocean to be lost forever at sea and only after that they found out that they needed his blood to break the curse so they kind of screwed themselves on that front but now they're about to break it and a little while later the situation is as follows. Both parties are now at Ilo de Muerta, Barbosa is inside, ringtone outside with Jack, and Jack tries to convince him, tell him go inside, and convince Barbosa to let his crew come out so they can kill them. But once he gets inside, he convinces Barbosa to let his crew out before ending the curse so they can go attack the British and win the fight because they cannot die. So Barbosa agrees and sends out his men by foot, not by boat. On the ocean bed, they climb up onto the ship and they wreak havoc on the ship. The rest of the British on the boats outside don't hear any of the gunshots or battle going on on the ship, even though this stupid little decoy started shooting at the ship and they were just staring at them so I fucking explain that to me. Also Elizabeth who was locked away in the captain's room for safety escaped through the window got a boat and started rowing away to the Pearl to free Jack's crew and take control of it and this is where I ask how the fuck she got that boat because to my knowledge they don't keep boats back there they keep it on the sides of the ship right? Am I wrong here? I don't know. After they take control of the ship she wants them to help her save Will but they don't want to saying that they want to keep to the pirate code so she goes alone to the boys who are currently battling Barbosa and some of his men. Jack gets stabbed and if we find out when he steps into the moonlight that he cursed himself on purpose just in case something like this happened by slightly pocketing a coin while trying to convince Barbosa to send out his men. And so they continue fighting. Lizzie joins the fray and fights with them till eventually Barbosa pulls a gun on her and we hear one gunshot except it's not from him, it's from Jack right at Barbosa's dead heart. And he's like, congrats moron, you just wasted your one shot. But he didn't. Because mid-fight he bled on his koi and threw it over to Will who also did the same and dropped it in the chest, breaking the curse right as Barbosa was mocking him, making him mortal again, causing him to bleed out of his fucking wretched heart and die. Quick question though. If he would have stepped into the moonlight real quick and came back, would that have reset his wound or something? I'm just curious. Anyway, the rest of the crew also have Godmon turned off, so they lose to the stupid British. Everyone goes home, Jack goes to hang, but at his hanging, Will confesses his love to Elizabeth, and with a little help from her, he attempts a daring rescue of Jack, which gets pretty far. Will tells No Ringtone that his place is right here between him and Jack, and Lizzie joins to stand between him and Jack as well, next to Will, breaking up with Ringtone. All around bad day for Ringtone, I think we can all agree here, he's getting shafted right now. Then Jack stumbles off the same spot Lizzie fainted off, landing in the ocean in the same spot she landed in, avoiding all the rocks, finding his ship back with his homies, ready to welcome him back as their captain. This movie gets three spooky scary skeletons out of a single pumpkin.